So, without further ado, I present the main guest, um, Mario Rosenstock, a man who has managed to present, who is being acclaimed here for managing to present the incredible, incredible absurdity of the Irish, of the Irish political system, and the Irish figures that we all seem to revere. So, Mario is going to come out, and he would like to thank all of you for coming out and seeing him by channeling Michael Flatley. <laughs> I'll be Jesus and Bigara. <laughs> Just prouder than any son of Finn McCool I am to be standing here in front of all you poor freshers of UCD and me just a humble owl Irish gobshite. <laughs> I'd like to thank all ye poor old craters for crawling in here on your hands and knees and ye living off pizza and chicken wings all week <laughs> and not two crew beans to scrape together between the lot of ye. Canary on Boverlat. Thon Milshawn Aaron Fwinog. Thon Madra Dunta. I guess Thon Leroy the Egg Chat. You can clap if you want. Uh, I'd also like to bring in some orders of business here today. We have a uh, treasurer in the room. His name is Fionan. Good Irish name. My, both my legs are called Fionan and Fiacna. Jesus. <laughs> They've more jizz in them than a trout hopping out of La Carve, so they do. <laughs> They're feeling great, ensuring all you would be too if your legs were insured for twice the national dead era. But his name is Fionan, he's in the room, he's one of your treasures. And uh, I'd like us all to uh, wish him a happy birthday today, and I'd, I'd like to channel the, the voice of Joan Burton, the Deputy <laughs> Prime Minister, to Ala Marilyn Monroe in 1962 to wish Fionan a very happy birthday. Thanks very much. <laughs> Hi everyone in UCD. I'd like to say happy birthday to Fionan and we can all sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Treasure. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. That's my own voice. But soon I'll be doing James, don't worry. His voice, I mean. He's very proud of himself. I'm quite popular down there, you know. I just have to put on this chain. It's part of the hardship of being in office. Help me on with my chain, will you? You can start now. Yes. I don't want to talk for too long or else you might get my voice inflections. Yes. Um, so it's coming. <laughs> so will we start at the beginning then? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Do not you remind me of? You remind me of a little boy. A little boy, a little Fianna, a little Fianna Fáil councillor down in County Clare called Nicky McSweeney. <laughs> Go on, yeah. <laughs> Got there eventually. So, I mean, how did, you, how did you start all this? How did you start just taking off people that you meet? I think it started p p perhaps when I was about five or six, and um, your parents are in the kitchen, and they're talking with each other, and you're going, anyway, can I just, anyway, can I, anyway, and neither of them, none of them are looking at you or paying you any attention. So I remember the first thing I ever did was doing an impression of my father, who sounded, for no reason that I can think of, Eastern European. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, I said, Why do you want to do that? Uh, why are you going down there? And my mother went, Oh my God, he's doing you! And my father went, That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> and I went, Yes, it does sound like you. And then I found that it was a kind of a method of gaining people's uh, attention. So really what it was, was an attention grabber that you could stop people in their sights and uh, get them to listen to you. And so it became a kind of a powerful tool. Now, I wasn't the sort of person in school necessarily to do the teacher, but I used to kind of do other students. So it's kind of a little, you could see, let me see, somebody bullying somebody. 
And so if you started doing an impression of the bully who was bullying somebody, you'd be amazed how powerful that is and how the bully never bullies again after they hear their voice. And so I just remember what a powerful kind of thing it was and that you should use it carefully. And, uh, not that it's like a superpower or anything. <laughs> use the impression. <laughs> and, uh, and then I didn't really do much about it, but I became an actor. So I think that's part of what was going on with me, that I was actually looking at people, I was observing people, I was taking people in. So I was taking people in visually and in, with my ears as well. And so I became an actor and, uh, and uh, I was in college. Unfortunately, I was in the wrong college. So I was in the other one. And, uh, so uh, thanks very much for this award, considering that. And, um, and I became an actor. And so I was acting there in Trinity. And uh, then while I was in first year, actually, I had an amazing experience. Uh, I did loads of plays, but uh, an agent came to see me from England and they posted a thing on the message board. There was no emails kind of really or online back then or Twibble or any of that sort of stuff. So they posted a thing online going, we think you're very good. Do you want to be a professional actor? So I was going around the school for the next few weeks, posting this thing around going, oh, they want me to be a professional actor. So I went for an audition for Glen Row. Does anybody remember Glen Row? Yes. And I played, I went for an audition for the doctor of Glen Row and I got the position of the part position, Jesus, the part of the doctor in Glen Row. So basically I was a student in first year with a job on television that paid me money. Um, so needless to say, I was extremely popular um, in the bar. So um, that was what got me into that. And uh, yeah, I remember you, we were talking earlier. He's just coming. That bit wasn't interesting. <laughs> just, let's just move on. I'm the big balls here. <laughs> um, He's right though. <laughs> and you were saying you're doing a bit of debating as well. We're a debating society, and it was, you're saying it was a powerful tool. Yeah, exactly. Again, I did some debating in the hist, and again. When you'd hear somebody else's arguments, one of the best ways of taking down somebody else's arguments is just doing an impression of what they just said. And people would, would applaud their debate and they go, he's a fantastic debater, that's a wonderful point. And then you'd go, do you know what he just said? He said, just talking like la la la. I said, Jesus, he's shite. <laughs> so it was a really, really powerful tool to expose somebody's uh, uh, arguments. And in terms of your own history, I mean, the name Rosenstock is pretty unusual, if I'm being honest. It is, yeah. Uh, and so people, every time I meet people, they go, so Mario Rosenstock, yeah, so that's the real name. And it takes you a while to go, that is my real name. So uh, it's a German name. Uh, my grandfather was uh, German, and he met my grandmother, who was a nurse from Athen Rye during the Second World War, and it was love across war-torn Europe. And he came back to Kil uh, Limerick and set up his doctor's practice in Kilfinnan, and hence the ability that I have to do Michael Noonan's voice, because he's from Limerick. And also with the OD. Uh, so those are Limerick. And also Paul, fear of God O'Connell. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> shut your hole. <coughs> you, shut your hole! <laughs> and, uh... No, it's okay, it was shut. And, uh... So he set up a practice in Limerick, and, uh... He had five children, and... Uh, that's, I was born unto one of those children who was my father. So, I mean, speaking of some of your, uh, when I look back, some of, one of my favourite uh, episodes of Gift Grover, one of my favourite things that you did was when you, do, when you met Roy Keane, and you did that double on, double on Tondra, I suppose, with him. Yeah. How did that come about? It was terrifying. <laughs> Basically, I'd been doing impressions of Roy Keane for a long time on the radio, and he used to come to Ireland every year to do uh, the guide dogs for the blind. And we received a call uh, once from his PR going, hey, listen, Roy's coming into town. Um, he'd like you guys to interview him on the show. And Ian Dempsey, who presents the, the Ian Dempsey Breakfast Show on Today FM, uh, said, oh, so he wants me to interview him, does he? And he said, yeah, but he wants Mario to come along as well. And he went, you mean Mario? You know Mario does Roy on the show. And they went, yeah, Roy knows. He's happy with that. <laughs> and he says, but he's only giving you six minutes. So we met him in the Radisson Hotel. Uh, in Stalorgan, just down the road, and we had six minutes with Roy. Incredible experience. We marched into the room. He's there on his own. Uh, he's pacing the room on his own. I walk over to him, we say hello. He looks through you with these Velociraptor green eyes, <laughs> shakes hands with me, nearly breaks my hand, and smiles, and he goes, sit down. <laughs> and so we're both, Ian and I are both shaking. And Ian goes, okay, well, uh, uh, Roy, uh, it's brilliant to be here and everything. And uh, uh, Ian did a little interview with him. And at the end of Ian's interview, Ian goes, now we have a guy on the show uh, who uh, you know he does you on the show. And uh, Roy goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> and um, he said, uh, so would you like to say hello to this guy? And he said, hello. 
<laughs> and I said, ha, 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 hello. <laughs> and he said, what do you want? And I said, I had all these notes prepared. So I said, well, obviously, said before, like at the end of the day, a lot of people say, uh, I sound like you. And he went, no, you don't sound like me. You don't sound like me at all. And I went, no, but obviously some people say, I do sound like it. No, you don't sound like me at all. Ha, ha, ha. Well, obviously some people say, I laugh like you at the end of the day in the sketches. No, you don't laugh like me. And I went, well, people do come up to me and say, no, no, that is a Roy Keane's laugh. Ha, ha, ha. And he said, okay then, make me laugh. <laughs> so Roy Keane has given you six minutes and then has told you, looked at you in the eyes with the Velociraptor as and went, make me laugh. <laughs> it's like Paul O'Connell asking you for an arm wrestle. And so I had a choice in my mind, I was there. If I tell him a joke, he definitely won't laugh. So the only thing I could do is say something laughable. So I said, okay, the FAI is a monument to professionalism. <laughs> and he went, <laughs> and then I went, <laughs> and he went, <laughs> so we both, uh, we both, it sounded like we were both laughing at the same thing and sounding like each other. Have you, have you met anybody else? You, you yeah, a lot. I mean, it's, it's very strange meeting these people that you bump into them. I mean, probably the strangest one I ever had an experience of in my life was picking up the phone in 2007. And I didn't recognize the number. I went, hello? And this voice went, hello, is that Mario? And I went, yeah, this is Jose Mourinho. <laughs> and I thought, it must be somebody putting on his voice. But then I went, no, I do his voice, so it can't be me at the other end of the line. <laughs> No, nobody's doing his voice. This is me, Jose Mourinho. Hello, how are you? I would like to make a proposition to you. I would like you to come over and do a show for me in Chelsea for the players. Are you serious? Absolutely. We've heard this song you do on the radio and we want you to come over. Drogba, Makaleli, all the players want you to do it. Will you come over? And I went, okay. And he went, very good. See you on Friday. <laughs> So then I had, was in touch with uh, Simon here from the Director of Communications from Chelsea Football Club. Jose has been on to you, yeah. The, the, the boss, it's actually serious, he wants you to do it. Are you serious? So eventually, long story short, I ended up taking a Ryanair flight over to uh, London. Coming into a room, they had agreed that I would do Jose Mourinho with his coat and his scarf. I would do a fake press conference in front of his players and him, with him in the audience. <laughs> with a, a little table that had said the special one on it. And I came in and I went, I give them the players all pre-prepared questions. So Drogba is like holding a question. So I'm there, first question please, Drogba. And he's there, Gafil, Gafil, oh, do you think we can win the league this year? Shut up Drogba and eat your vegetables. <laughs> And I'm looking down, kind of going, and Jose's going, ha, 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 hilarious. And so the gig lasted about half an hour. It was an okay gig. It didn't go great. Part of the reason it didn't go great was I looked down, there was only half the people laughing. And I'm like, this isn't going good. And then I realized only about half of them understood what I was saying, because none of them were speaking English. They were all from Africa and France and all these places. So none of them understood what I was talking about. About half nine in the evening, anyway, Jose sent them all to bed. Like, you know, have you ever seen Sound of Music? And it was like, it was like Christopher Plummer in the sound of bed. All right, children, go to bed. And so all these multimillionaires just start running up to, the, running up to bed. And I went, where are they all gone? And he went, John Terry's gone for massage. Michael Lilly's going to play Xbox. Lampard is going to watch Match of the Day. Uh, Drogba, he is going to read the computer magazine about the uh, cars. He knows where they're all gone. And so we sat down together and we had a bottle of wine. I was just completely surreal. We had a bottle of wine and he went, I've been listening to your work all week on the radio. You're fantastic. I've been listening to podcasts. It is incredible. You're so funny. Do your Mick McCarthy. And, and I'm like, you listen to the Mick McCarthy. I love your Mick McCarthy. I love your Mick McCarthy. And I went, you want me to do the Mick McCarthy now? He said, do your Mick McCarthy. So I'm there, all right, Jose. <laughs> what the fuck do you want me to do Mick McCarthy for? And I looked over at him and he's there, that is Mick McCarthy, that is Mick McCarthy, that is Mick McCarthy, that is Mick McCarthy. That is Mick McCarthy. It's completely surreal. And he's going, do the Irish manager, the Steve Staunton creature that you do. And I, well, all right, Jose, it's a bit of a banana skin there, but, you know, I'll give it a bash. And he's there, this is Steve Staunton, this is Steve Staunton, he's such an idiot, it is perfect. <laughs> and then um, he's there, who do you think should be manager of the Irish team? And I went, you. And he went, maybe sometime later. <laughs> and uh, I said, who do you think should be manager of the Irish team? And I'll never forget what he said, the Roy Keane. And I went, why? And he just said this thing in his very Jose way, because he's invincible. <laughs> and only Jose Mourinho can say three, three, three word sentences like that, you know, um, incredible stuff. Other people um, I've met um, during the height of the financial crisis, 
I got into the lift. You've all had this experience. You get into a lift, the lift is closing, and the door is coming across, and a foot goes in the lift. And so that happens, and the foot and the lift opened, and the man staring at me square in the face was Brian Cowan. <laughs> and he was going out to do an interview news talk, and we're in the lift, and I'm just going, oh God, four floors, this could take 20 seconds, please let me out of this. So it's me and him in the lift, and he's there like this, and we're just about to get out, and he goes, well, obviously, I'm giving you plenty of ammunition anyway, you need to do that thing. <laughs> and I just went, Tishuk, you are the gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> and he went, I didn't know what was going to happen there, and he went, keep a bomb, young man. And so then I realized that he's the kind of guy that had a very good sense of humor, a developed sense of humor, and although we were going through an extremely difficult period, as some of you may remember, this person was able to see that outside of all that, you still have to maintain a sense of humor and all that. And I understood from previous people talking about him that he was extremely good company and all that, and all that sort of stuff, and an interesting guy to be around, but that was a, that was a scary one. Um, and then the Noonan thing, actually, I was doing the Noonan thing earlier, and that came. Uh, very interestingly, because a lot of you might not remember, but you might have been too young, but I started the whole gift grub thing doing Bertie Ahern, and Bertie Ahern was basically Ireland's Tony Blair, or in a De Valera as well, in kind of way. He was our Taoiseach for a long, long time, and like he dominated Irish political life for, for a long time, and I did him on the radio every day. And I did him as the kind of, uh, oh, yeah, heavy, heavy, it's fantastic, and Man United, and Bass, and oh, that's fantastic, and you know, this sort of, you know, this man of the people kind of stuff, and uh, he was completely trouncing Michael Noonan in the polls as well. So myself, I was doing a gig one night and in the Burlington, and I remember Michael Noonan was there. And I never used to do Michael Noonan on the radio. I remember this got balding man beckoning me towards him, and I said, oh, Michael Noonan, I went over to him, and he went, why don't you ever do me at all? <laughs> I said, what? Why don't you ever do me at all? You're always doing your man Roger the Dodger and how great he is in his laugh. And his little ha 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 ha. And he always escapes. And nothing in what a word about the tribunals. I don't you ever do me at all. So then I started practicing him and doing him. And that took a while. Um, but, I, but one of the interesting things actually is that some voices are hard, harder to get than others. The Cowan voice for me was very difficult to get. And it happened um, very flukily actually. I was trying to practice his voice having lunch. And I was having a, uh, I was not getting anywhere. And I stuffed a chicken tiki sandwich into my mouth. And I was just trying to write it. And I went, nah, nah. and I went, hold on, what happened there? I thought, what happened there? That, Mike, that was Brian Cowan. So I put more chicken tiki sandwich into my mouth. The future and the country is going far and it's grand, like, you know? So then for the next three weeks, I had to, uh, whenever I did an interview with Ian, I had to put chicken tiki sandwich in my mouth during the interview. So some voices are harder than others. I don't know why I said over there. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone you particularly relish doing? Is there anyone you really enjoy? I love doing Joan Burton. <laughs> I really do love doing Joan Burton. Not only because she's the deputy teacher that tarnished that, but also for the last two years, I think she's kind of morphing into a modern day Bertie Ahern. <laughs> like she's basically going, you're all people and you're all benefiting from the stuff that labor has been doing for the economy and I can't stand anybody who doesn't talk up the economy because people are always talking it down when they should be talking it up and she's kind of morphing into Bertie Bertie Ahern because it's kind of as if she's saying you know if you don't talk the economy up you might as well go away and commit suicide <laughs> Um, so she's kind of a modern day Bertie Ahern in that way. So I like slagging her. I love, that's why I started with Flatley today. I love Flatley because he's totally ridiculous. As a voice, I love, love, love to do Gabe Byrne. Always loved it. Love to do Gabe Byrne. And you're doing a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job there. My lovely little boy with your cutie little chains. There he is. Stand up. Let them look at you. Let them look at you. Do a little twirl. Do a little twirl. A lovely, lovely. A lovely, lovely bottom. He has a lovely bottom and a lovely little, lovely little boy. Lovely little ribs on him. Lovely little ribs. You'd fit three of him into me, so you would. Not that he's that way inclined. <laughs> Jokes everywhere. 
triple entendres. Uh, so he's a voice I love doing. Um, let me see. I, I've always got great crack out of doing Keith Duffy. How are you, buddies? I love him. It's just because oh, I try anything. Acting, no problem. Singing, bollocks. Uh, tires, I now have a tire company. Great, I'll do anything. I'll even pick up awards from the Anna Rarity Law Society, the Fellowship of the Rings. <laughs> but uh, let me see, who else? Uh, I love the Mourinho thing. Uh, I've always loved the Roy thing. Roy is amazing because Roy, I was doing Roy 16 years ago and Roy is still around. Um, kind of looking like that cross between uh, Tommy Tiernan and Saddam Hussein. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, incredible the, the look he has, you know? How do you find coming up with new material all the time? Very difficult. People <laughs> That's the most difficult part. I mean, no, the, the whole thing about this thing is that some person will come up to you and go, uh, how, my friend of mine uh, does a fantastic game in Dunphy. Uh, brilliant game in Dunphy. So you go, what's his name? John. He's here, actually, yeah. John, do your name in Dunphy. He's like, no, no, it's a good game. It's not a great game. <laughs> and they're, That's not bad. That's not bad. So tell us something. It's a good game. It's not a great game. No, but tell us uh, something about it. This is a good game, not a good game. <laughs> and that's the problem. So it, people do impressions, but it's not, what you, it's not the impressions that you do, it's, it's the fun you create out of them. And that's, otherwise you're just a parrot, or you're just a budgie. And uh, so you have to write stuff and come up with stuff. You mentioned the word absurdity at the top there, and I suppose that's kind of what I fall towards. I love create, putting people in crazy situations, and for them to be almost true, that you can imagine that the situations aren't totally out of the blue, that this person would nearly do that. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, God, I'm wrecked. <laughs> um, so I think it's probably a good time to open up to the audience if anybody would like to uh, <laughs> yeah. give it. <laughs> I do this at my show, right? I do this at my show, the live, last live show. I Crazily, I don't know why I do it, but I open it up to the crowd and they can shout any names at me, and if I do them, I do them or whatever. So it's up to you there. Start shouting! <laughs> So if anyone has any ideas for anybody... Any voices that you know that I do that you want to hear? Or, no, no. Who? Boom, boom. Let me tell you what. I, <laughs> I have a plan. And that plan is to make as many sporting analogies as I can. And to make as many boxing signs as I can. Who asked me that question? I also like pointing. I love pointing. I love walking over here and pointing like that. It doesn't really matter what I point at, because when I stop pointing, I can do high fives. Give me high fives. Are you on the Twitter box, are you? Are you on that? What's your handle, motherfucker? I'll tell you what. Young people. This is all this young people. They sit on people's knees. Do you know what they do in college? I've heard that young people get off with each other. I'd like to get off with you. No, because it doesn't matter if you're gay or if you're lesbianic or if you're straight anymore. It's all about brotherly love. Peace. Get into that Twitter box and get off with me. <laughs> Do you know what this feels like? This feels like the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to find out something. What's your name? Aoife. We're going to find out that Aoife is a man. <laughs> and Aoife has been sleeping with... Nasson. Nasson. You know his name isn't Nasson, but that's why he's agreed to come on the show. Aoife? just taking a lie detector test and you're fucking lying. <laughs> you didn't sleep with Nasson at all. You slept with the glasses girl beside you, <laughs> whose name is Bernard. <laughs> Sorry, that was just made up. Oh, um, yeah, any... What do you want me to do, Jerry? <laughs> The only reason you want me to do Jerry Adams is if Jerry Adams was here. I'm not the name Jerry Adams is here. He could be here. Well, if you, you know, hold on. With respect. I didn't interrupt you. Please don't cut across me. You're there with a the little black bird on your white t-shirt and your lovely quiffy haircut as if you're up during the Olympics in the cycling competition. 
or you're a little bit overweight for the swimming, but it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. No, everybody says no. With respect, if he is here, he'd make himself apparent. But he hasn't, so he mustn't be here. He's gone away. He's not here anymore. I'd love to do Daniel O'Donnell. I wonder is there any reason why you asked me to do Daniel O'Donnell. You must love a wee bit of Daniel, don't you? What's Daniel doing these days? What's he doing? He's doing Strictly Come Dancing, so he is. He's doing Strictly... Would you do the... Oh, he's a fine wee hunk of a man. Would you do the old cha-cha with me, would you? Oh, he's lovely. He's lovely girls. We'll let him there for the moment, will we? Will we let him just stand there? You just stay there, my love. That's lovely. Any other voices? Well, the sticky of a ship in the elevator. And the ship that was talking about the other new sheet, even if it's fellowship, never ever the rings in it, it changed. And I said, but why are you not talking about the other back of the team? So I pulled him down there and said, shook, 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 shook. He said, I wouldn't go down there. Genuinely, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. It's so emotional coming back to my alma mater. <laughs> Devastated. What's your name? The guy who asked me to do me. Who said it? What's your name? Christian. Christian, I know you've had a lot of problems recently. <laughs> I, know, I know you don't want to talk about them in public, but you probably will end up talking to me anyway, genuinely pouring your heart out. Thanks a million. Uh, well, you know, it's very difficult being Fianna Fáil at the moment. Uh, it's very difficult being anywhere at the moment. Uh, everywhere I seem to go, I seem to dig up a little hole for myself and fall down. Uh, but hopefully we'll come back uh, somehow, forward, backwards, uh, sideways. I don't really care what way I go, as long as it's moving in some direction. Uh, you're Francis Brennan. How are you? Francis Brennan. It's great. It's a lovely place. I like it. It's not very nice up there. I don't know about the hole in the roof. I'm not sure about the hole in the roof. I like that. Yeah, it's great. Too many people living here. Very hard to get accommodation here. Yeah, not bad though. Yeah. Gorgeous. Couldn't be ours. Oh, uh, does he? What does he do? Joe Smith. Davy Fitz. I need a voice changer to do Davy Fitz. I use a pitch shifter on the radio. So we use a pitch shifter that turns my voice into a kind of a smurf. So it's like, my man, let's get fucking stuck into these bastards! We're gonna go out at the kit limb and can go hell for fucking letter! Who's the owner? Joe Smith. Oh, Joe Smith. Tickle? That's the only thing. Tickle? Tickle? We have problems in the tickle? Tickle? We have problems in the tickle with Ireland? Tickle? And he's made an Irish citizen recently. So, yeah, Tom Raig, Le Gok Rath, Air Fod. I've forgotten how to do him, actually. I only started doing him recently, and sometimes I forgot, forget how to do him. I'm getting tired. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love doing Robbie Kane. I love doing Robbie Kane as a criminal, actually. You know, you get a one nil victory, we got him, we get out, you fucking get out of the place, you know. <laughs> fucking CCTV cameras everywhere. You know, I went into the Aviva, next to you now, an hour later, I'm over in Tala, job done, job dusted. <laughs> bang, bang, two goals and I'm out of there. <laughs> Fuck that. You know, they can't repatriate me to the United States or extradite me to Tala. So we'll just take one more suggestion. Guys, you're all incredible. You're all going to be huge. UCD, it's like one massive X Factor, but somebody's going to have to go home disappointed, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. your lovely audience. Thank you very much. There's one last thing to do, and that is to the reason you're here, which is to present you with the award, which is Honorary Lifetime Membership of the Law Society. So you're joining esteemed people such as Bill Clinton. Wow. Um, 
I did not have sexual relations. I did not have, oh, let me, I did not have sexual relations with James to get this war. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.